Welcome to our first video on interpreting 12 lead ECGs. This video is going to contain the eight steps that we recommend every person do when they're interpreting a 12 lead ECG and it's going to really help you cement the steps that are required to get to a thorough interpretation of the 12 lead ECG that uh, you're either given in a scenario or that your patient has. So let's go over those eight steps real quick. The first is rate. So with rate, we want to know, obviously, how fast, how slow it is. Um, nothing too crazy complicated there. But the reason it's first is because if it's too slow, we need to take action. And if it's too fast, we need to take action. So that's why we look at rate first. Second is rhythm. And as we all know, there are times when you can have not too alarming numbers, but the rhythm itself that's presented is something that requires quick action. So that's why we look at rhythm second. And then the next six steps really focus on the premise of 12 lead ECG uh, interpretation. As you know from your arrhythmia identification lectures, these first two steps here, those are not uh, specific to 12 lead ECGs. Those are specific to learning arrhythmias and going through you know, the 35 or so different rhythms that are out there. So third is QRS axis. And we get a question a lot of times, why is this important? Why do I care about this? And really the, the quick and easy answer is QRS axis deviation can lead you down the path that something is wrong with your patient that you're kind of getting a hunch about. So it's a, a clue, so to speak, in the 12 lead ECG interpretation. Number four is R wave progression. And R wave progression is similar to QRS axis identification. However, with QRS axis, we're looking at an X and Y graph, so something like this. And with an R wave progression look, we're looking at the V leads. And with the V leads, what we're seeing is more of a, think of it like a cube. We're looking at the heart in a three-dimensional sense and the electrical activity health of the heart um, in a more roundabout view. Number five is the ST segment. This is probably the one everyone's most familiar with. We want to know if it's uh, depressed or elevated and the various things that can go along with that. Six is the T wave. As we know, T waves can cue us into things like uh, electrolyte imbalances um, and ischemia and infarct and um, the different things that can go along with that. Seven is Q waves. That's that drop off the cliff, so to speak, um, mainly presented uh, in V leads, but you can see that all over the, the 12 lead. And lastly is reciprocal changes. And there's a whole chart on reciprocal changes that we'll go over uh, with each of the actual specific case scenarios that we identify um, with the videos that we do from here on out. So this is our eight steps to reading a 12 lead ECG. We're looking forward to starting this series and uh, hopefully getting a lot of good questions from you guys in the comments. So we'll see you on the next video.